What up, y'all? Welcome to Hotep Ish. Intelligent Ish Talk. Intelligent Shit Talk. We here live. Join in the chat room. We're not going to get started right away. We're going to give y'all a chance to join in the chat room. We got a lot to talk about. We got a lot to talk about. We got a lot to talk about. We got Nick Cannon over here moonwalking like a motherfucker. You got Terry Crews tap dancing on his grave. Got all kind of shit going on. I got my special guest. Well, this nigga ain't a special guest. He a regular on this hoe. Can you you call somebody a special guest when you got them on when they on all the time? I know y'all like to hear them. Yeah, I'm I'm a recurring character at this point. Yeah, recurring character. Let's let's say it like that. Ruben Warren, how you doing today, my brother? Hey, I'm doing good, man. Blessed and highly melanated. Ah, it's funny. It's funny you say bless and highly melanated because <clears throat> that got me thinking about church. Like, you ever notice <laughs> everybody in church be blessed and highly favored? Mm-hmm. Ain't nobody blessed and medium favored. Like, like, <laughs> hold on. Can't all you niggas be highly favored? Half of y'all caught the bus to church. And half yeah, of y'all came in a car. But the people <laughs> that came in the car... Half of y'all broke down on the way here. So are you as highly favored as a nigga that came in a Mercedes? Well, what's funny is they always say they always say I'm blessed and highly favored, but then they say favor ain't fair. So it's like, wait a minute, you can't have it both ways. That means some of y'all ain't really highly favored. Then. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, 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 hey, ladies in church, you, if you if you if you gotta keep coming to the to the church congregation for bail money for your son, you ain't highly favored, all right? <laughs> What's up, G Rock? Uh, checking in from YouTube. Shout out, shout yourself out in the chat room. We got people listening on YouTube. We got them on Facebook Live. We got them on my personal Facebook page, the Hotel Pitch page, the Breakthrough page, Periscope. We're on all the platforms. So even if you're talking and it look like you're talking to yourself, it's other people on the platform that you know you're going into it. So go ahead and shout out where you're from. Thank y'all for tuning in. Thank y'all for tuning in. Donate to the Cash App. I'd like to thank you guys, who, people who have donated. It is a, a huge help because what we do here is done out of love. Hotep Ish, Intelligent Ish Talk. I do this because I nip. Well, this, this is the reason why I do this before we even get all the way up into it. I do this because they say our people die from a lack of information. One thing I understand is black people are very intelligent. We're very smart. We just misled, including me. I ain't separating myself from the pack, but I'm just somebody who loves to research and talk. And uh, and when when I'm done researching, spread the information and talk shit while I'm doing it. You know what I mean? Because I I know black people are smart. The minute we get information, we do something with it and we flip it. You know, so I want to publicly thank... uh, T.R. Jones for for donating. And I want to publicly thank uh, Michael Jones. Thank you. He said thanks for the info. So uh, thank you for donating to the cash app. <laughs> oh, you know, and to, to add to your point about black people being really smart, uh, remember, as soon as slavery was over, black people quickly became the most educated group as soon as slavery ended. Man. Dr. Carl Anderson let, let, teaches us we went from 0% literacy rate to a 50% yeah. literacy rate by 1896. 30 years after we got out of slavery, we were from no education to all, over half of us being educated. Yeah. With no help. Yeah, exactly. That was all on our own. That, nobody nobody put, you know, took it to the side and was like, hey, this is how you read. It was like we, you know, we pulled ourselves up by our bootstraps, like they always like to say. We so, did it. We did it. And so they cut us off on our knees. What is what I want to get into? For those who haven't heard the news, let's get on into it. Um, our brother Nick Cannon, we had his back on this show yesterday. Black society had Nick Cannon's back. Nick man. Cannon was coming out guns a blazing. He was riding yesterday, man. Man, shit. <laughs> we saw Nick Cannon at Farrakhan's uh, July 4th speech with the turban on and the mask on his face. We was like, hell yeah, Nick Cannon, keep going, keep going. And then somebody got to him and said, hey, nigga, you've gone too far. 
And since then, he's moonwalked. I'm going to say a little bit, Ruben, then I'm going to get to you and your thoughts. But let me say this first. First of all, I'm going to start off by saying, this whole speaking up for black people, this shit ain't pretty. I lost, I know I, I didn't get, a, it's a lot of stuff I lost in comedy because of how I speak. And it's funny because now that this quarantine is going on, I look at so many people who used to book these comedy clubs and I see why I lost in position because these niggas is coons. But that's another story. That's a personal, when you know when you speak up for black people, that's going to come at a cost. Nick Cannon, you know when you speak against those folks, it's going to come at a double cost. That's why you have to be measured and be wise on whether or not you decide to approach that subject. I'm going to start off by saying I thank you, Nick, for introducing us to Dr. Joy DeGruy on your show and for bringing on Professor Griffin, Tariq Nasheed, and KRS-One. I want to thank you for that. I want to thank you for putting the truth you put out there because it took a lot of courage. But after all that, you know you tied to them people and they yanked your chain and you starting to backtrack. And you had your people behind you. Here's my issue with that. It's not so much that he backtracked. It's that before, when you go back and listen to that interview he had with Professor Griff, he got the baton handed to him from Dick Gregory. And that's my issue. Nick Cannon sort of put himself in Dick Gregory's shoes. To me, Dick Gregory is one of the top three or four black men or men in American in the 20th century for America. Dick Gregory, let's talk about who Dick Gregory is, and then we're going to get into it. Dick Gregory was the most famous comedian on earth. And we talked about him a little bit last night. Go back and watch yesterday's broadcast with Ronald Hurd. He's the person who introduced Dick Gregory to the internet. Talked to him more than any, anyone else as far as interviews go. But back to Dick Gregory. Dick Gregory is somebody who was at the top of the game. He was where Kevin Hart is now, but back in 1965, 66. He was at the top of the game. Dick Gregory saw that what was going on with black people was more important. He left the game, handed the baton to Bill Cosby, and was like, you look, you got this entertainment shit. I got bigger fish to fry. And Dick Gregory did that, and he spent the rest of his life sacrificing money and fame for the people. Nick Cannon decided himself to put himself in Dick Gregory's shoes but when it came time to beat Dick Gregory, he moonwalked out them hoes. Ruben, I know you got some strong feelings, man. Talk to us about how you feel about yeah, the whole uh, arc of everything with Nick Cannon. Go ahead. Yeah, um, you know, it, it's like I mean, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a comedian, so I'm in the business. So I, so it's like to to a certain extent, I do, I understand. You know why? You know why he? You know backtracked and gave an apology. Cause I get it. Cause you know it's. I mean, cause when you think about his platform and you know like all the comedians that he does have with Wild and Out and all that kind of stuff and you know all of that is like I I get it. Cause you got people that you gotta feed. You know what I mean? So I I don't I don't agree with it, but I get I get why you know they yanked this chain and he was like all right fuck it I'm gonna just submit. But my thing is too is like. On, on the flip side of that though, it's like well I understand at the same time, it's like, bruh, if you gonna if you gonna go this route, you know what I'm saying? Like if if you gonna set yourself up to be this to be this person and and knowing already how just America operates with truth with black people who are truth tellers, you it, it, it's like it's almost like you, you can't you can't be lukewarm. You know what I mean? Like you got you gotta be you gotta either, you know, you gotta go one way or the other. You you can't play the fence, and then, and then you just you gotta stand on that shit. If if you gonna really like, if you bring Professor Griff out, you bringing out Doctor Joy DeGru, you bringing out all these heavy truth tellers, right? You quoting Doctor Francis Crest Wilson, like you got to stand on that shit. You know what I mean? Like if 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 it comes, you know, if it's something that you truly truly you know uh, believe, 
you know, and something that you that you really are passionate about, which I which I you can see that he is because look at like I said, look at who he brought onto his platform, you know, with, with his uh podcast. So yeah, but uh yeah, I just think if if you're gonna if you're gonna go that route, if you're gonna if you're gonna talk that shit, you gotta stand on it. That that's my only thing. You know, it's like you you can't you you can't uh you know you can't back down once the heat gets on you because that kind of defeats the purpose uh you know I'm over here talking in my shit. Did y'all hear me? Yeah. Okay, yeah, uh, uh, Hassan. Thank you, Hassan. I over here. I muted my goddamn self while you was talking so y'all wouldn't hear this air conditioner in the back. All right, back back to it. When it comes to Nick Cannon, you stepped out. And we all know the cost of stepping out. That that doesn't... That, there's a reason why a lot of people don't step out because it comes at a very expensive cost. Exactly. And Nick played that and he, he didn't think it all the way through, like what Hassan said in the chat room, like what Gary said in the chat room. When you do it, when you quote Dr. Welsing, when you that's strength Dr. Welsing, she's a god. You can't back off when you quote her. Dr. Jordan Grew, she's a living goddess. You can't back off. When you, when you quote Dr. Joy DeGruy, Tariq, I look at Tariq as a modern-day Malcolm-ish type character. Somebody that don't give a damn and does, he goes all the way. You you could dislike his personality. You could dislike, look, there are no perfect messengers. So I don't give a fuck how you feel about his personality. He gives us the information in the, in the, in the game. And that's all I care mm -hmm. about. Do you give me information and I can decide for myself what I want to do with it? You know, so you did that. So I want to give a special shout out to some of the artists who have gone out there and stayed out there. I'd love to get a shout out to Eddie Griffin, comedian who off, who doesn't get talked about enough. You know what I mean? But he said mm -hmm. a lot of these things within his comedy, woven within it. And he stayed mm -hmm. out there and he never backed off of it. Professor Griff. Nick Cannon walk, couldn't walk 24 hours in the shoes that Professor Griff been walking in for 31 years. Professor Griff got kicked out of Public Enemy for saying the same stuff 31 years ago. Ice Cube. Ice Cube been going hard. Ice Cube Man, somebody who knows if I don't if I can't say anything to support my people, I'm not gonna say nothing at all. Salute to Ice Cube and salute to Dick Gregory. Go ahead, Ruben. I was gonna say with Cube, man. I, like I told you earlier today, I was like that this quarantine just awoke the sleeping beast that was in Cube. Cause it's like, you know. <laughs> I mean, you know, you knew him from back in the day. I know, like, for me, you know, for my generation, we know him really from movies. You know what I'm saying? We don't necessarily know, uh, you know, his N.W.A., you know, uh, solo rap career really like that. We, we really know him from Friday and, you know, on up. Um, so so to hear him speak now on some, you know, on the shit that's happening and, and just to be so blunt with it is like, OK, this this is why they didn't like your ass back in the day. Like, <laughs> Look, man, I got to remind know? people. I don't know if you ever heard. You might be too young, Ruben. Go, but go back and listen to it on the Lethal Injection album. If you want to know who Cube is, go back and listen to his song "Cave Bitch." You ever heard that? Oh, I, I haven't heard it, but I know that song though. Wasn't Dr. Khalid Muhammad on that track? Yeah, give me a black goddess sister. I can't resist yeah. her. <laughs> no stringy hair, blue eye, recessive, depressive, ironing boy backside, skinny head, stringy. Go back and listen to that. That's who Ice Cube is. He just shut the fuck up so he can get them movies off. But he back to it. You know what I mean? So, you know what I mean? So, we got to know that, look, we as a people, and I talked about this on Craig on Craig's podcast a little earlier. The reason why they cut a Nick Cannon off so fast is because 
this is scientific, scientifically proven, proven, you have your first leader. One, the minute you have your first leader, and I mean your, your leader and your first leader, somebody to come up behind them, when you see two people going something, then that third person come, the minute the group sees that third person joining in to participate, and then it's gung-ho as the first person, then you see the rest of the group change. 90% of people are followers. You need your leader and your first follower. And when you get that, that's why America's so quick at shooting a Malcolm and killing him, knocking him off. Or nowadays, they may not kill him, they discredit him. Or if they can't discredit him, they do some shit behind closed doors and make them apologize. Because they are so afraid of all of us uniting and coming up together when it comes to that. You know what I mean? That That's... That mm -hmm. I think black people, I think this is a lesson for us, man. They over here shook at the truth. Like when they went ahead and took Nick Cannon down, they never said what he said, what was wrong. They just said he made anti-Semitic comics, but they never said what the comments was. That got to tell us something about how powerful the truth is, black people. Yeah, and also to me, what, what what was most fascinating was the amount of support that Nick actually got. Like black people, we was like yesterday, black people on social media was riding hard for Nick. Hard. I mean, I mean, it was like the I would say a good like ninety percent of black people was like, yo, like we we ride because I think a lot of us was just like, I think just because where we at, I think you know socially. Uh, you know, with this current climate that we in and, and just black people, just the way our focus is right now, it's like we not falling for no bullshit right now. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? Like, like we 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 hella focused. And, and I love I love this laser focus that we in right now. And so it's like we we could see the bullshit. We like, oh, wait, but that's because most of us like, well, he ain't say nothing wrong. Like he wasn't lying. You know, like just the, even the sound bites. I never heard. I didn't hear the whole thing. But just the sound bites that I heard. I'm like, well, I mean, he wasn't lying. It wasn't like he was out here telling both face lies i mean what he said was 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 you know factual um so yeah but i i, I thought just to see how many black people was ready to ride for him i thought that was very telling and and had he had he walked away from it all i mean you know who, who's to say if, if black people was going to necessarily support him but just the fact that black people just was riding for him and had his back that that says a lot to me you know what i'm saying Yep, Jordan Whitlow in uh in the chat room said the best. We on code. And Chris said it too, we focus. Like, this is what I want to take I want to say about that situation. Because the reason why we talk about current events here on Hotep Ish, Intelligent Ish Talk, we like to get the lessons out of it. Black people, people in general, you black, anybody listening, anybody listening, I love you. There are lessons to be learned in everything. And I always feel that there are deep lessons to be learned in anything that the mass has its attention focused on. If no matter how juvenile it may look, if there are a lot of people focused on something, there is lessons in game to be pulled out of that. And it's on us to pull the lessons in the game out of stuff. Like I say, when I end every broadcast, there are no perfect messengers, only perfect messages for those who are willing to pick up game. When I say not, there are no perfect messengers, that means the messenger may not always be a person. It may just be the story that we see happening. The story itself is the messenger. What message did you get out of it? You know what I mean? Even if the, even if the story seems like debauchery and bullshit, you know? So when it comes to the lesson in this Nick Cannon story that what we see going on right here is I'm seeing black people hella on cold in mm -hmm. this country. We ready to ride for one another. Not only are we ready for it, we doing it. Black people are still, even though we was talking about Will and Jada last week, people were still flipping it and saying, okay, cool, but what about Breonna Taylor? I've never yeah. seen this from us as a people, man, and I'm so proud. I'm so man. proud of where we are right now, and we, we, we got to know this shit come in steps. We ain't going to have it all. But all you Negroes out there talking about what black people don't do, what they don't do, nigga, you projected your own insecurities. Because when I look around, I see us coming together. And when I see what Nick did, Nick, yeah, it's a TV deal, but we also got to remember 
before the Irish Mafia, before the Italian Mafia, there was the Jewish Mafia. It's, you don't know what kind of shit games they play in that Hollywood. You don't know what pictures they took of that man's kids and told him, you know, watch what you say. <clears throat> That's why, and I'm going to bring it back to you, Ruben, in a second. That's why I always say we can't look to the people in Hollywood. When they do give us game like Nick did, we just got to snatch that shit up and keep it. That's why when he dropped them interviews with the, Dr. Joy the group, Professor Griffin, Tariq, I watched them right away. Because I know YouTube is really good at taking shit down when black people are talking about some positive stuff. They do it all the time with Jason Black, with Professor Back Truth. When we talking about that real game, YouTube is good at taking it down. So when I see some information, Dr. Phil Valentine, somebody that's going to be up, I listen to it right away because I know these motherfuckers are going to take it down if it get too deep. You know what I mean? So I, mm -hmm. that's why I say, like, black people, I think we are in going in the right direction. Nick Cannon got his head cut off, but we still moving. You know why? Because we ain't waiting on no leader this time. We doing this shit. What you got to say about that, Ruben? I just want to say, you know, I think black people, I think we're finally getting into our Hydra mode. You know, like Hydra, you know, is the multi-headed dragon. So when you cut one head, it don't matter because the other head is still moving. Uh, another head grow back in its place. So I think I think that's where we at. And I really I really do. I've really been feeling too the last couple of weeks like. the. It, I don't think it's by coincidence that 2020 is the start of a new decade. Uh, it's an election year. Uh, all, all this, all this crazy shit has been happening. But then, in the midst of all this, you you see, like you see us as a people, like there's there's been a collective shift amongst us with everything that's happened this whole year, and and I feel like that's not by mistake that like ushering in this new decade is like ushering in like a new age for Black people. Like it's it's almost like it's a I don't know, man. I guess you could say like a new civil rights or like a, a Harlem Renaissance type. But it's like we end like right now. What we're shifting into is definitely a uh, is definitely a, a new age for Black people, and a lot of us are are getting with it, you know. But I, and then unfortunately, a lot of us gonna get left behind as well. But but I love I love this change that's happening going. And I, like I said, I just find it weird that this is a new decade. Like this is literally the first year of a new decade. And you just see just just this this massive change, you know this this massive shift, and I think it's beautiful. I, I, everything you said is beautiful. I wanna, you right. I wanna point out something that you said. You said unfortunately, all of us, some of us, gonna get left behind. I personally don't think that's an unfortunate thing. Well, I mean, no, if you the kind of nigga, that's, yeah, that's dead weight. <laughs> if you the kind of black person that can see a black person get violated by the police. And you say, well, what about black on black crime? Yeah, we don't need you. <laughs> Keep your ass behind and I don't miss you. It, I, people, ladies with blonde weaves, the ones that go down to your back of your kneecaps, I won't miss most of them as we move forward. <laughs> I ain't seen, I love my black women, but I ain't seen too many in the blonde weave that got nothing good to say down to the back of her ankles. I, we, you, these are the people you try to teach and you try to tell them what it is and they be like fuck you where's my check I do not think it's a bad thing that they get left behind is what I'm saying Chris oh, Matthews yeah, yeah. we gonna get to Sam we gonna get to Terry Crews in a minute but I, um, wh what I wanted to say was like going back to what you were saying um, about us as a people moving forward and I think that I'll go back to what I was listening to uh, Dr. Phil Valentine today. If y'all know who Dr. Phil Valentine is, he was in, I think he was in all the hidden colors, all one through five. But I know he's in hidden colors. So, yeah. yeah. I'll listen. Dr. Phil Valentine had a, had an interview um, yesterday and he with Brother Rich on from me on Friday. And he reminded everyone. I remember watching videos of Dr. Phil Valentine in 2009, 11. He said in 2020, we're going to start to see things more clearly. Phil Valentine been saying this shit since the 90s. He said when 2020 comes, 2020 means straight, clear vision. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Clear vision, yeah. He said there's going to be a lot of things going on. There, Dick Gregory even said there's going to be a dictator in the White House. Dick Gregory said that on Brother Ron's station, the dude I interviewed mm. yesterday. He said mm -hmm. that in an interview with him back in 2012. We're going to have a dictator wow. in the White House. We're probably not going to have an Olympics in 2020. And things are going to start to become more clear. Brother Phil Valentine said that, and so did Dick Gregory. We here in 2020. Look at what's going around. Us Man, as a yeah. people, we starting to wake up and see things. We didn't see this game in 2016 like, like the way we are right now. We didn't mm -hmm. see this game in 2012 the way they are the way we are right now. We as a people are really starting to wake up and see things clearly. Something that Brother Phil Valentine said we was going to do decades ago. So I'm saying this to the people out there. The things that people like to call pseudo, like to call the things that y'all like to call, what's another word they like to use? A cultish or out there? Conspiracy theory. Conspiracy, that's the word I'm looking for. Them niggas was right. Because <laughs> I was a dude back in 2010 when I first heard, when I first saw Phil Valentine, I was like, who this light-skinned ponytail having ass nigga looking like Howard Hewitt talking all this shit? I didn't believe it. <laughs> I was still on, look, I ain't never seen him on CNN. I was on that shit back in 2010. Mm. But then uh, my eyes got open around 2012. And I was always pro-black, but I went to another level in 2012 when I really got open and I got into the information a lot deeper. The cats that were saying that stuff back then, that the going back to Khalid Muhammad, things that Farrakhan had said, things that Dr. Welsing said, things that Leonard Jeffries, Wade Nobles, we got so many black scholars that have been saying this shit's coming and it's here. It's time that we pay respect to our people and who we are because... And I, I just want to say that I'm, I'm encouraged by us black people. I'm encouraged by the people of the earth for seeing what's going on. I'm encouraged by how we stood behind Nick Cannon. And I'm encouraged behind us seeing him apologizing. But the rest of us are still like, fuck that. I'm loving it. Go ahead, Ruben. Then we're going to get into Terry Crews. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like I said, 2020, man, I I think uh, you, you summed it up perfectly. We're saying 2020 is perfect vision. And and I think, like I said, this shift that we've been in this whole year, that that's what's happening. Like we we you know we it's like I feel like 2016 to 2019 we was at the eye doctor. You know what I'm saying? They were like <laughs> scanning us. You know what I'm saying? Like, can you read this line for us? You know what I'm saying? And and now 2020 is like okay, well now we now they gave us the glasses. 2020 gave us the glasses, and now we out here seeing shit for what it is, and we operating accordingly. And I, I and like I said, I, I really do think it's beautiful. Like just seeing. Just seeing black people just on code, just seeing us, like I said, laser focused. Like I've never seen us so focused before, and I just, I just think that's beautiful. I, I think that is so beautiful, and I, and I, and I know it's gonna stay. Like I know that's not going nowhere. Cause I think we just, we just got a different understanding of what, of what it is now. Like it's like we finally like, okay, it's almost like we kind of like stop bullshit. We like, all right, all, let's, let's stop bullshit. Like it is what it is, nigga. Let's, let's just face it head on and do what we got to do. And, and I, I, like I said, I think that's beautiful. It's beautiful because us as black people, y'all know I study history real real close. When we fight, we win. You can't name a time that black people fall back and we lost. We 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 usually just be like, all right, we 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 get tired of fighting and be like, all right, yeah, yeah. We we we, we fight enough to back them up off us, and then we go back to playing video games and, and dancing. We don't be tripping like that. And then while we playing video games and dancing, they undermining us, and then we don't get back to fighting until we gotta fight. You know what I mean? But, you know, because mm -hmm. we're we're peaceful people. We just want our space to, to barbecue, listen to Earth, Wind, and Fire, smoke a joint, and chill. That's all we care about. We don't understand how crazy <laughs> these motherfuckers are. And, David Banner, you're right. The scared Negroes are nervous, too. Which brings us... My, my, my. <laughs> my, 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 my. Terry Crews. Terry Crews says, cites Nick Cannon's anti-racist white comments, saying, I told you so. Remember that shit Terry Crews was talking about the other day when he was saying, don't let 
Oh, white supremacy turned us into black supremacists. Look at this nigga. He's saying, I told you so. He's saying we have to include the, here it is, here's a tweet. We have to include the white voice, the Hispanic voice, and the Asian voice. We have to include it right now. Because if we don't, it's going to slip into something we're all not prepared for. He said that on June 16th on the talk. That's something that he retweeted today. Because why? He's a tap dancing coon. Terry Crews. When I was young, I was never afraid of the KKK. It was people like you, black people. The threats, the intimidation, the discouraging free thought, and the insult of acting white. <laughs> Ruben, <laughs> what's wrong with this nigga, man? Talk, talk, man. Talk, talk. Hey, man, like we said, everybody ain't going to make it, bro. As, as we get the vision clear, everybody not going to make it. Uh, you know, and like you said, that's a good thing. You know, I... I look honestly. I, I look at I look at the Terry Crews types the same way I look at Donald Trump. I like that you out in the open. I know where you stand, so therefore I know how to operate. I don't need you to be on no covert. You know what I'm saying? Undercover shit. Like keep it 100. Say how you feel. Say say what you think is real. Because that way I know how to navigate. You know what I'm saying? I don't need you beside me. You know, and and you out here feeling some other type of way, secretly undermining. Um, you know, but you know it's. It's not really surprising, though. I mean, this is the same. Like, people be forgetting. This dude let a grown-ass man grab his dick in front of his wife and did nothing about it. So <laughs> you can't really be surprised at a, at a dude who, who says that, you know, who says anything at, after this. You know, it's like, yeah, nigga, you, you, let, you let a grown-ass man grab you. Like I said, not just grab you, but in front of your wife. Like, that's, <laughs> that's the ultimate emasculation in my eyes. Like, I would never let a nigga... Grab me in front of our woman, nah, fam. You you gotta catch some hands or something. I'm not I'm not gonna chalk that up to no toxic masculinity. <laughs> David Banner in the chat room said the best. He going harder at Nick than a person who played with his balls. Exactly. And he got smoke for everybody except the person who played for his balls. Exactly. And I want to break down Terry Crews for a second. Terry Crews is a former football player. Our football players, unfortunately. Are unfortunately, are the bug broken of the bug broken in black society. When it comes to football, especially for those raised down south, you know how it is with those big mega stadiums, high school stadiums that look better than the shit the San Diego Chargers play with, played in. That's why they had to come to L.A. You get these, these supreme athletes who are plucked out of the ghetto and placed into these well-funded schools on the white side of town. So during their formative years, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, those are the years you really start to be attached and notice the world around you and look at the world around you and try to make the world around you make sense. So those are the years that these football players like a Terry Crews are being plucked out of the ghetto and being sent to the white side of town to be in the best schools. So an association goes on very early in their mind between white and better white and good why is it every time i'm around these niggas things is bad but when i go around white people it's good when you're an athlete you don't get treated like the everyday black person you get treated better than the everyday black person because you can run jump swim hoop dunk whatever it is you get that extra piece of chicken this happened on a slave plantation it's no different they're at they had buck games on a slave plantation the biggest buck Got the biggest rewards and the biggest piece of chicken and the biggest notoriety. Same thing in sports. So like a well-trained dog, you associate those who give you the best gifts with what's good and those who, when you go back to the ghetto, you see nothing but depravity. You don't realize at 14, 15, 16 that the ghetto is a condition that the people who live in it didn't cause but were thrown into. So what happens is you develop this skewed point of view. Another thing that happens around the age of 13, now I say in anthropology and in sociology, you're attracted to the women you're around 
basically at the age your nuts drop. Whatever age you start feeling your nuts fit itch when you a boy, if you a girl, reproductive organs and shit, whatever the people of the opposite sex you're around at during those age, that's generally who you're going to be attracted to the rest of your life. Because there's always going to be that one that one to one association between the girl you was looking at the second time your dick ever got hard. That's just biology. So I said all that to say when we're talking about a Terry Crews, when we're talking about a lot of these athletes, you're dealing with people who their bug breaking starts around the age of 12 or 13. So by the time they reached college, they're already five years into their bug breaking process. By the time they're in their third year in the NFL, they're, they've been longer bug broken than they've been around their own families. So that's the mindset going into a lot of your athletes. They, their minds are never cultivated. They were sitting out there to run and get their head bashed in, and they were left to their own devices when it came to getting the world around them. And if they had shitty parents that didn't explain to them, worse yet, a mom that was just ratchet, they really going to associate black with bad because of the people that she hang around with. So we got that going into the, the mindset of your people like a Terry Crews. I get it. I get it. I get it. I just wish you niggas would shut the fuck up. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, don't you think you speaking for us and you really not. You speaking from a skewed point of view, but the worst part about it is a person like a Terry Crews, they won't pick up a book and find out more. And so we get what we get. And he don't even realize that He's one of the main uh, people perpetuating the most negative stereotypes of black men. What are your thoughts on on that? Uh, yeah, I I think uh, I, I think Terry is uh, he's like many black people. Uh, you know, with this with this shift comes the fear of losing your position. Um, you know, you because one as because as, as as the dynamic in black society shifts, also the power dynamic between black society and white society shifts as well. Because now black people are starting to leverage what power we do have. So those of us in black society that uh, decided to you know bow down to white people as a way to get ahead. They're seeing that black people as a whole are no longer going that route. We're kind of like on some, hey, look, this is this is what it's going to be for us. We have to start looking looking out for ourselves, and we need you to acquiesce to what we doing and get with our program. But they're not you, and 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 rightfully so. They're not used to that because, like I said, we've only really had kind of one way of operating. So this new way is like, oh shit. So they're basically trying to signal like, well, just I just want I just want y'all white people to know what these niggas is doing. <laughs> that that ain't me. You know what I mean? Like these them niggas is crazy, but I'm I'm still I'm still down with y'all. People you know? like and so people like Terry Crews, they bet against black society. He decided very early on, like I said, these niggas is a losing team. So he figured the way to make his daily bread is to bug dance, is to get as strong as he can get, and put his titties out in front of the stock market. And act like a goddamn buffoon. You know, he don't he didn't develop any skills to feed himself. Cause when black society, if black society took over, he wouldn't have no professional white ass to kiss. So he don't know what the fuck to do. This how bad it's gotten, Ruben, and I want you to talk about this. This how bad it's gotten for Terry Crews. This motherfucker called to defund Pornhub? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, dog. He was like, we got to defund Pornhub. And I was like, when I saw that shit, because I know he, he came out and said he had a porn addiction or whatever. And so that was like a couple years ago he said that. And so when I saw that, I was like, wait a minute, nigga. Why we need to defund Pornhub? Like, they ain't did shit to me. Like, just because you ain't know when to stop watching, nigga, don't mean I got to. You know what I'm saying? Hold like, on, hold on. I like, didn't know me that. And my administration cool. I didn't know that. Hold on, hold on. Sick. Terry Crews got that Kurt Franklin? Yeah. He got the... Yeah, he said, dude. Yeah. So, so because he had a porn uh, addiction, a porn hub, here's my issue, Ruben. Can you trust a nigga that jumps like this and poses on screen? 
Audience, I see y'all watching. Can you really trust a nigga that does this for the cameras and tells you that he wants to deform Pornhub? Look, I don't have a porn addiction, and I'm not judging, but it's people out there who do. Who in the hell to tell you that, look, if you want to, what they should, I, look, I hear, defund, defund America's got talent. How about that? Because Terry Crews, <laughs> your only talent is cooning for white people. So let's 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 do that. Defund America's Got Talent. How about that? And you, can't even do, you can't even defund Pornhub because it's not a community based uh, organization. <laughs> like defund the police is, is city related. That's why they're getting defunded. Like <laughs> Pornhub is like its own private entity. That's like a corporation. Like you can't you can't defund them. Like <laughs> uh, yeah, but yeah, but that, that's a, that's a nigga who just. Uh, that's a nigga who's just really just out there just to try to undermine it and slow the, mo the momentum because that's just a distraction. Like, why are you even talking about that? You know mm -hmm. what I mean? People like him within black society are very dangerous. I've talked about Terry Crews a few times and I'm going to keep talking about him. Why? Because we got a lot of young listeners out there and we always got to know that when it comes to people when it, in the mainstream, when they get that big money, a lot of that money is with the thought of, you know, you side with us, not your own people. We got to remember this, man. When it comes to the mainstream, we ain't got no friends. We, you know, we ain't got no friends. They put Terry Cruises and people like that out there for a reason. Dr. Claude Anderson said, if you see him on the news more than twice in a year, get rid of him. That ain't the real deal. When it comes to Nick Cannon, I'm not ready to throw him away. I'm not. I usually don't. I don't like the, the apologizing. I don't like the backtracking. I don't like any people stepping up and saying things and then backtracking. But I'm not ready to get rid of Nick either. You don't know what kind of threats were thrown Nick's, Nick's way. We know Nick knows what he knows. But my question to you, Ruben, is this. Because I'm curious. I'm saying I'm not getting rid of Nick yet. But I do want to see what his next moves are. He said today that he's not, he's not going to do his radio show. He's taking down his, uh, his interviews with Tariq Nasheed and Dr. Gordon Glue. My biggest thing is I want to see what he does with that Dr. CB documentary. Now that he oh, yeah. had a certain yeah, moon that walking for, uh, heart. Because Nip was working on that, right? Yeah. Nip was working on it, and then he took over after Nip died. After Nip died. So, I want to see yeah. what he does, what information, if he's going to be 100 with this Dr. Yeah. CB documentary. Or is he going to yeah. hit you with that hesitation pull-up jumper? What you think about that, Ruben? Go ahead, go ahead and say something. Yeah, um, I'm like you. You know what I'm saying? I, I ain't gonna lie. I was, I was sad when I, when I saw the apology yesterday, but I was nowhere near surprised. Uh, you know, is <laughs> you? I mean, you know, you can't really. I mean, you know, you, you. I tell people all the time, like, I never expect nor depend on celebrities to speak up. I mean, if they, if they do, I think that's great. You know what I'm saying? More power to you, like John Boyega. You know what I'm saying? Salute to him. But when he did his speech, you know, at the protest and all that kind of stuff. Um, but like I said, it's, it's, I don't expect them to and I don't depend on them because they're, you know, they're in the system and they, they got to do what they got to do. Um, but, you know, but like I said, I just feel like if you if you are going if you are going to say something, then I just is like, you know, you're going you go all the way, nigga. Yeah, it's like and, and plus it's like and with me, it's like. Like, like I said, with Nick, I'm not ready to throw him away either because, you know, I'm like, he's, he's still a solid dude. You know what I mean? He, he, and just because and all that he's done up until then has, has been good. So I'm not going to throw him away for, you know, for not for not wanting to fuck up his bread. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I get it. You got you got family. You got to feed. So you do what you got to do. Um, but yeah, I, did, but I do just feel like, you know, if, if you are going to go that route, you know, and, 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 and you know what you know what that comes with. So you can't. So it's not it's not like you was just out here trying and then you was like, oh, this is what happens when you do it. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like if if you go if you're going to go down that road, you you going you got to be prepared, you know, and, and plus he's already lost the Viacom deal. So, 
I mean, I don't see how an apology, unless the apology is going to bring it back, you know, reinstate it. But I mean, you don't you you already walked away from that, and that was your that seemed like that was your biggest, you know, bread and butter right there with wilding out and stuff. So I, I don't know. A, we'll, we'll see. I got a question, and this may be a rhetorical question. But I got a question for the people out there. When, if y'all think I'm being too hard on black people not apologizing, if you think I'm 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 just being militant, ask this question: Who apologizes to black people? Bro, Who apologizes to most images of black men? Are either being a criminal, gay, or trans. Nobody apologizes when they put us in those images. Nobody apologizes when nine out of ten black women on camera are snapping their necks. When was the last time you seen two black women on camera at the same time be civil to one another? You'll see when you watch Empire and Power and these shows. When they're when the black woman is talking to the white person, she got some sense on her head. But when she's talking to another black woman, is sister girl next snap? This you ain't gonna do this. It'd be so bad. I'm watching. It'd be so bad when you see a black woman on camera talking to her son. She can't just say, "Son, can you please take out the trash can?" It's James. You need to take out the trash because. <laughs> My ancestors took out the trash. It'd be like, oh, I don't know no black women that talk like that. But on TV, that's nine out of ten black women. Who apologizes for that? Who yeah. apologizes for misrepresenting us on TV? And every time you see a black family, it's a mother and two kids and not the father. When the Center of Disease Control said that black fathers are the most active fathers of all the fathers in america we do homework more we give more Yo, money my, we spend more time go ahead oh, i was just gonna say man like uh so we we pulling nick cannon off for what he said on a podcast mind you his own set like not it wasn't even connected to any of his stuff that he actually worked it was just like his own separate black people podcast. talking to black people yeah, but you mean to tell me that Bill Maher can still be on HBO after calling himself a field nigga? Are you are you serious? Is that what we're doing? That's a good point. But Tucker Carlson still point. still out here giving reports every day on Fox News, but we gotta get rid of the you got you gotta come down on the black dude with the quickness. But like I said, Bill Maher still on TV. Ain't nobody said nothing. Ain't nobody apologize for talking to all them protesters. We saw white people burning shit down, breaking shit. But they still blamed it on us as black people. Then nobody apologize. Nobody apologizes to us. But we're expected to walk on eggshells around other cultures. And that's my problem when it comes to the people in here. You're listening to Hotep Ish. Go to the website, hotepish.com. Get your t-shirt. Get your merchandise. Donate to the Cash App, Dewan Brown dollar sign on Cash App. We are here every Thursday, 8 o'clock until... Um, and then also random times throughout the week. We got some special interviews coming up for you guys. We've had two great interviews this week. Go back to listen to this past Tuesday's broadcast of Brother Obi. We're talking about Cuba and how Cuba is uh, gone and, and how it's stepping out the COVID virus worldwide. What you can do to help and information. Check out this past Wednesday's broadcast of Brother Ron. He, Gives you a long history of Dick Gregory, Judge Joe Brown. We talk about current events. Check out both of those ca uh, podcasts. Um, check out Ruben. Ruben, uh, the author of Swag Patrol. Great ass comic book. I can't wait till the next one come out, my brother. And uh, oh, subscribe. What's your What's your page, Ruben? Hey, y'all can follow me uh, IG, Facebook uh, at Ruben Comedy R U B Y N Comedy. And subscribe to this Facebook page. Subscribe to the YouTube page for those listening on YouTube. Hit the notification bell so you know when we're coming online. Um, back to what we're talking about as far as uh, with, with with Nick Cannon and what's going on. He, when, when it comes to black people, nobody wants to, nobody apologizes to us. 
like Joe Biden is literally has a nerve to run for president right now. Right now. The dude who wrote the 94 crime bill ain't apologized for shit. Not, not only is he not apologizing, but he also is throwing everybody else under the bus. <laughs> like he got he got an excuse on why it's everybody else's fault, even though he told people it's called Biden's law. But now we're like, well, since it's your law, why did you write it? Oh, uh, it was the Congressional Black Caucus. And uh, and uh, the Clintons wanted it, and uh, and, and uh, Reagan wanted it. Like it's every, so everybody else wanted it, but not you. Even though not you, you said it's called Biden's law. Even though you <laughs> wrote a series of laws, that wasn't Joe Biden's first law that he wrote or sponsored. Oh yeah, yeah. that's specifically wanted, targeted, wrote, uh, targeted black cocaine, people. Cocaine, uh, yeah, the, the Strom yeah. Thurmond law. He mm -hmm. he sponsored. So when it comes to that, no one's apologizing to us at all for anything. No. But we're always told that we have to be the ones doing the apologizing. And we're apologizing for something between Nick Cannon and Deshaun Jackson. They couldn't even point out the statement that they needed to apologize for. You right, John Hill in the chat room. I thought Nick was ready. Uh I thought we thought he was ready for the crucible, but he wasn't. For you gonna step yeah. out like that, and like I said, I'm not here. To, I'm look. I, please, I don't want. I don't want to shit on Nick Cannon, but I do want to make this a teachable lesson for everybody out there. We all got to be the 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 liberators of our environment, and sometimes that comes at a cost of not being liked. We as a people have to become comfortable with not being liked. Black people have this addiction to being liked by other people. And look, they not gonna like us. They don't like us. They love our culture, mm -hmm. but they don't like us. The minute yeah, we I, I, stop I, demanding that they like us and just be us, shit could change quick because they can't do without our culture. Go ahead, Ruben. Yeah, I was gonna say, uh, I actually said this. I thought about this earlier. I'm like, black people right now, with this 2020 vision that that we're getting, we are now at the crossroads where we have to decide if we want to be included or respected. And one comes at the cost of the other. So you so we have to really make that we gotta really make this decision. Like, do we want respect or do we want inclusion? Because inclusion comes at your respect, comes, you know, the cost of it is is respect for you because they include this shit now, but like they include on TV, but they got acting like thugs, act, acting like you know prostitutes, you know, acting like dysfunctional families, all that kind of stuff. What do we so need? To, what decision do we need to make again, Ruben? Say that one more time. Yeah. So the crossroad, we got to choose between whether we want to be included or respected, and one one comes at the cost of the other. So, and I honestly, I would, I thought we really need to be putting towards respect because if you got respect, you got power, so you can you can do what you need to do. You know, but yeah, but uh, this inclusion thing and, and this wanting to be accepted and validated, it's like at what at what cost though? We can't even we can't even back Nick. You know, like Nick can't even just just come out and say, you know, quote Dr. Francis Cress Wilson, you know what I'm saying, in her ISIS papers without without being ridiculed and all that kind of stuff. And you know, and so we got we gotta just really make that decision right now, y'all. It's twenty twenty and this this where we at. It's like we gotta we gotta we gotta go through this crossroad. It's it's respect or inclusion. And we gotta we gotta make the decision. You're right about that. And and, and to start off before we close on, I want to thank you guys for listening in, tuning in. Uh, I really appreciate you. We growing every week. YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Periscope, everybody listening. I thank you guys. Um, you said it best. Uh, respect or you said say that one more time for me again. Respect. Oh, we have to decide between uh, respect. Uh, you know, being respected or being included. Thank you. Respect or inclusion. That's and that I'm 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 gonna get at I'm gonna get at the horn one more time. I gotta I gotta I got I got I got yeah. We because here's the thing, black people. When we start to love and respect ourselves, and to the level that we're not looking for it from anyone else. The love and respect is going to be a by from them is going to be a byproduct. They always say they hate us because they we we say they hate us because they ain't us, and that's a partial truth. 
I look at it like this. This is for my basketball fans. And I'm going to give you guys a basketball analogy. Everybody loved Lamar Odom, but they didn't, they didn't really love. They kind of hated Lamar Odom, too. Why? Lamar Odom had all the skills. He was, he could have been as good of a point guard as Magic Johnson. He had the scoring ability. You know, he could have scored on anybody. Lamar Odom had the skills to do anything on the court that he wanted to do. But he is always coming up short. It would be like he would play hard, give you 30 points and 15 rebounds one game. And then the next five games, the nigga give you six fouls, two rebounds, and two points. And you get mad because you see the skill level that he has. You know how good he is, but he don't use it. You hate the athlete that you know got the skills that they ain't using more than the one that don't got the skills and is using everything that they got. It's something inherently in us as a people, in human nature. And we see this in school. We see this all throughout life. With your friends, when you know somebody's not living up to what you know they can do, you don't respect them the way you really would. And then when you double that up with not only are y'all living like this and you better than this, when people kick you, you let them. You don't kick back. And not only do you not kick back, you forgive. If you're a lesser talented people who wish they can create your music, who wish they can crack jokes the way you can do, who wish they can dance like you, dress like you, walk like you. If you're that person and you wish you could do the things that these people do when they sleep, and that same God is allowing you, who you know you ain't got their skills, to kick around, and that same God is coming back to you begging for approval, you going to have respect for that person? No. And that's kind of how we are as black people. We got it all. We got all everything we need in the world. But we begging for approval from people who wish they had what we had. It ain't no respect in that. Respect don't exist in that environment. We got to respect ourselves. We have to show the world how to treat us. We can't ask for it from them. We got to show how we treat ourselves. It's a damn shame that white people got to hold up our hip hop legends. It's a damn shame. And, I, and I'm not even mad at white folks for that. They, white people have done a great job being custodians of our information because we don't hold shit. We create it and then kick it off to the side, and then if that person ain't done nothing good in six months, we'd be like, who the fuck that nigga think he is? He done fell off. I thank white society for being custodians of our information. I thank the Latinos for listening to war and all those good old 60s and 70s oldies because we don't fuck with it. They preserving our information, and they're honoring it, but we don't honor our own shit. And then we ask why people don't honor us. That's some shit we got to fix, man. We got to honor ourselves. And when we honor ourselves, when we love ourselves, those who follow us and everything else are going to follow us into self-love and loving black people. What you got to say in closing out, Ruben? Go ahead. Say anything you want to say. Yeah, no, I mean, you know, what, what you just said was, was, was spot on, man. Uh, just to add on to it, you know, at the end of the day, black people, we have to understand we literally, we lead the world. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Uh, despite, I mean, which is which shows how amazing we are, because despite all that has been, you know, all that we've gone through and all that we're still facing right now, Despite all that, black people are literally world leaders, black Americans specifically 
are world leaders as far as culture goes. And I mean, as far as, I mean, fashion, I mean, music, the top music in the world, hip hop, rock and roll, jazz. Those are like the three biggest worldwide, you know what I'm saying, music. And and that's created from black people. You know what I mean? And and every it's like everybody knows it and everybody knows that they need us. But it's like it's, it, and it's like and we know we know that they need us, too. But when are we going to start acting like, it? you know what I mean? So I, I think, like I said, we, we got to just choose, y'all. Do we want respect or inclusion? Because if, if we go for inclusion, we ain't going to never get no respect. And, 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 and that makes inclusion pointless. But if we got respect, it, it don't matter if if we include it or not, because at the end of the day, we run like black people run this shit. Like, I don't think they understand. Like, we literally we run everything. Like what we say goes. Remember, black people, we said we said on fleek. That's the that's the dumbest shit ever. But that shit caught on like crazy for a quick minute. I mean, the lit. You know what I'm saying? Like this, in it, the, the, this down to the slang. Like what we say, fucking rules. It, it is, it is, it is bomb. Word is bond. Like our words are decrees to the world. So real talk, yeah, real so man. yeah. Like we, we got, we got to really take. That's power. I don't, and I don't, I don't think we. And I, honest, I think because how we've been, I think you know, I think there's a, there's a fear. Just how like you know, people are like scared of success. You know what I mean? I think as black people, we, we we have a fear of of the power that we have because it, it is. I mean, because that's some powerful shit though to to be able to like say something and the whole world catches on to it. I mean, that's that that's some crazy power to have, and 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 it, and I can see that being scary for us because you know we've always been you know we've only really been in a subservient position. So I, I get that, like to have that kind of power. If we were to really, if we were to really wield that power and and really transform it into something you know that could better us. I mean, it's th- that's part of the reason why we, you know, get uh, oppressed now because they they don't want that. You know what I mean? Like they don't want us to be able to to yield that kind of power. So, yeah, man, we just, you know, like you said, we we just gotta we just gotta get get that respect. You know what I'm saying? Fuck inclusion. You know, it's like because they 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 gonna include us regardless because they need us. We gonna be included regardless. Yeah, <laughs> hey, real talk. You know what I'm saying? Like we, we, we don't need to be worried <laughs> yeah. about inclusion. They including us regardless because they need us. So. We just got to focus on the respect, and that, that's what we got to do. John Hill, you said it right in the pa- in the chat room. Keep talking. We waking up. We waking up. The tide is turning. The tide is turning slowly but surely. We just got to keep pressing on. Michael Calvin, what's up? Salute to you, Michael Calvin Jr. We hey, need to up, hold Mike? ourselves to a higher standard and be proud of that standard. You goddamn right, Michael Calvin Jr. Salute that's, to you. That's. Thank y'all for joining in and saying what y'all got to say in the chat room. Yeah, but picking it back on what you off what, off what you said, Ruben, we're going to be included. If you look at America, they can't do without us. The world can't do without us at all, you know. And we just have to know that, and we just have to be. You know, it's an old school saying, "Just be." And then when we just be, everything attracts to that, because. We are the mothers and fathers of civilization. And going back to what you were saying earlier about us leading things, I remember reading something in a, in a research and marketing um, catalog. As a matter of fact, my uh, my business development coach, she's a, mark, a marketing expert. And you know what she told me? She said, when it comes to setting trends, all of the attention goes to what black males ages 14 to 24 are doing. That sets the trend for the world. What the black girls are doing at that age sets the trend for the women. But what what, what sets the trend as far as how, how everybody walks, talks, dresses, they study black boys between the ages of 14 and 24. What does that tell you, parents, as I break down to my breakthrough breakdown? This section is sponsored by Breakthrough Advocacy Services, if you look to the bottom on your screen, my company, Breakthrough Advocacy Services, where I mentor and I also give classes to children, families, and we also have family communication coaching. This is what we do. We uh, we help families and, and break down and know what's going on in the world and talk to one another so they can get themselves out there. What that shows you, black parents, is you have the gold mine. You got the answer. 
playing video games in that room next door to you while you're on the phone. If the world is studying your child to make billions and trillions of dollars, what would happen if there's a, co a collective effort amongst the black adults to cultivate the minds of them people instead of rushing them off to play football in a sport? Corona come ain't going to be no goddamn sports, but you still got to eat. And we got little gold mines, our boys and our girls in our houses. And we tell them the best they can do is sing for somebody else or play somebody else's sport. No, God damn it. You got the leaders of humanity right there. Tap into these little kids, man. They, and if you, if you don't know how to tap into these children, if you don't know how to tap into their minds, if you don't know how to tap into their gifts and their goals, that's what I'm here for. I have a whole special plan that when I work with children, I teach children and adults how to tap into their gifts so they can then grow into a world to where they can then sponsor themselves, live their own lives off them gifts, because it's all circles back to what we're talking about with Nick Cannon. If you want to speak, and you want to speak freely, you have to be able to feed yourself independent from the dominant society. When they feed you, when they write your checks, you're beholden to what they say you can and cannot do. Nick Cannon is in a big environment to where if he wants to stay in that environment, he has to operate that within the rules of, in the context of that environment. Nick Cannon knows how to eat for himself, but at this point he's chosen that he needs a little longer in that particular environment. Person like me, I'm probably never going to go in that environment because I don't want it. I don't want that. I, w I want to do what I do. I want to have a free voice. I can't be captured and bogged down. Thank you. I'm amazing what I do. I appreciate that. Um, we, I don't want that. And your kids are seeing what's going on right now. And they have to know that they are gold mines themselves. And we got to tap into that as adults. So if you want further information on that, hit me up at BreakthroughAS.org. You see the word down there, Breakthrough. Advocacy services that's breakthroughas.org, and I can help you and your children tap into that. Um, what are the uh, anything else you need to say, Ruben, before we head on out of here? Uh, nah, man, just you know, black people, let's just stay the course, you know what I'm saying? We we know we know what we got to do now, I mean, we've always known, but now we know now more than ever what needs to be done, what we got to do for our kids, for our future, for our survival. Um, so yeah, we just, let's just, let's just keep the course. Let's keep the pressure. You know what I'm saying? Let's get justice for Breonna Taylor, for Ahmaud Arbery, for George Floyd, for, you know, all the fallen soldiers that we done lost in the streets. Uh, let's just stay focused y'all. You know, let's, let's, let's keep it pushing. You know, let's not let the bullshit distract us. Let's, let's keep that laser focus, bro. It's 2020 and we got that crystal clear vision. So let's, let's just keep, let's keep seeing into the future. Amen to that. And I want you guys to remember, and I thank you guys, Chris Matthews, thank you for listening. Titus, John, Erica, I thank you everybody for listening in. Everybody on YouTube, everybody that's going to be listening to the, to the podcast later on that didn't get a chance to say anything in the chat room, I appreciate you. Donate to the Cash App, uh, hotepish.com, uh, where my t-shirts are, breakthroughas.org. If you're looking for mentoring services for your children or group classes, while your children are in homeschooling, hit me up. And remember this, there are no perfect messengers, only perfect messages for those who are willing to pick up game. Listen to the game. Don't look at the person. They want to cut Nick Cannon's head off. That's their business. Nick Cannon still gave us a lot of game. Let's go back and pick it up and use it for whatever we can use it for. And the rest, throw that shit out. We out. My name is Dewan B. We out. Thanks.